I'm just happy to see Jerry Russell. The guy I was speaking with on whatever night that was was Russ as well. Oh, yeah. And he took, uh, took every number I had. Yeah, now they were uh, doing some pretty thorough interviews that night. Yeah, so. absolutely. It was All great. Right. Glad to see you. I'm um, just going to move your gloves here. That's a little microphone, just okay. to make sure there's nice and clear. Um, as you can see here, everything in this room is uh, videotaped and audio taped. Check. Uh, you ever been interviewed by the police in a in a room like this before? I or? have never been interviewed like this. Oh, no? Okay. No. Let's get this set up here. Well, I guess the closest uh, interview by NIS for top secret clearance. Oh, yeah? All right. Well, again, Russell, I appreciate you coming in uh, an investigation like this. I mean, I'm sure you can appreciate it's been big news, uh, especially yeah. down uh, Belleville way. Um, and you know, obviously, our approach to cases like this is that uh, uh, we don't give up on somebody being alive until mm -hmm. we get evidence that they're not. So, um, because of that, we're treating uh, Jessica's case uh, as an emergent situation, Absolutely. obviously. Yeah. Um, so we're we're fast forwarding things that we might normally take our time with, mm -hmm. um, and that's why. Uh, we're here on a Sunday afternoon, uh, sure. so uh, again, I appreciate it. Okay. Um, we're going to do a pretty thorough interview today, okay? okay. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, the last thing we want is to be calling people back again and again and again, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over a number of things, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to explain what all those are to you, okay? okay? Um, I'm a big coffee guy. I don't know if you're a, a coffee guy or I not, but I didn't want to drink in front of you, so. No, I appreciate um, that. All right, go ahead. I could uh, definitely, are they black? Yeah, they're just black with uh, with sugar. Um, Started your what, sorry? Gum. Just oh, okay. Piece, piece of gum <laughs> well, there's napkins there if you want to toss it or whatever. I appreciate that. All right. And again, um, like I said, this interview is going to be very thorough. Mm -hmm. um, but again, uh, I have a simple rule when I talk to people. It's uh, I'm sure you're the same way. I, I treat pe everybody with respect. I don't want to ask if they do the same for me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by uh, going through um, what your rights are, okay? okay? Just like everybody else, okay? okay. Um, have you ever been read your rights before? No. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you've seen it on TV a whole bunch of times, right. but that's usually the American version. So okay. I'll go over with you briefly, okay? Mm -hmm. um, basically in Canada, uh, as you know, I'm sure, is uh, we all have uh, our rights guaranteed under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, right. okay? Now, uh, Russell, just to avoid any confusion, because people do get confused when they're talked to by the police, is mm -hmm. that... Uh, um, you're obviously not under arrest here today, okay? Yep. Anytime you feel uh, you want to leave here, you feel free to do so. The door's not locked. Teresa will walk you down to the lobby anytime you want, okay? Yep. Um, if there's anything that comes up in our interview today, Russell, that, uh, that you feel you want to talk uh, to a lawyer about, sure. um, you, just, uh, you just let me know, okay? Sure. And the reason for that is I want to explain to you exactly what's going on here, okay? Um, uh, Jessica uh, Lloyd is... Um, is one of uh, four cases that we're currently investigating. Okay, right. um, and essentially what's happened is over the past uh, uh, about four or five months, yeah. um, there have been four occurrences that, like I said, that we're looking into. Mm. Uh, two of those occurrences occurred in September of 2009, yeah. um, and very briefly, they were up in the uh, the Tweed area. Yeah. Uh, they involved uh, somebody entering uh, two different women's houses mm. um, in the evening hours and uh, committing uh, sexual acts, yeah. okay? Uh, in uh, November of 2009, yeah. uh, a young lady by the name of uh, Marie-France uh, Como um, yeah. Yeah, was found uh, murdered in her home in Brighton. Yeah. And uh, we believe that there was a sexual uh, component to that crime as well. Okay. And um, then, most recently, we have Jessica Lloyd's disappearance, mm -hmm. okay? So essentially, when you're looking at those kind of crimes, we're looking at a number of different uh, potential criminal charges. Right. Um, we're looking at issues uh, all the way from the most serious one, which is first-degree murder, mm -hmm. uh, kidnapping, uh, sexual assault, mm -hmm. um, break and enter with intent to commit sexual assault, yeah. um, forcible confinement. Okay. And uh, so, what I want to make sure you understand, and this is what we've been doing with everybody we've been talking to, is that clearly, when we find out who's responsible for one or all of those crimes, yeah. uh, they could be charged with one or all of those offenses. Okay. Whether it's you or whether it's anybody else. All right. So. And that's why it's important that we uh, make sure that people understand what they have to do and what they don't have to do when they're talking to us, mm -hmm. okay? So as I said before, any point today uh, you feel the need, you want to speak to a lawyer, uh, you let me know, and okay. uh, we can take you to a room where you can do that in private, okay? Okay. Um, do you have your own lawyer? I have a realty lawyer, but okay. no, I don't have a lawyer. <laughs> All right. Um, 
if at any point you want to make that call and you don't know who to call, mm -hmm. uh, we have a phone list of lawyers that uh, are available to give you advice free of charge right over the phone. Okay. okay? So again, if at any point today you want to uh, take advantage of that, you just let me know. Sure. Um, is there any reason you want to call a lawyer now? No. Nope. Okay. A um, couple other uh, fairly simple and straightforward uh, things that uh, you probably understand, but uh, again, we go over them to make sure everybody's clear, mm -hmm. is that uh, you don't have to speak to me today. Okay? okay. And the reason for that is because the law considers me to be what we refer to as a person in authority. Mm -hmm. Okay. Probably similar to what you may be considered to be on the base. Yeah. Um, and because of that, I can be compelled to appear before any judge in the country, basically, to account for what takes place here today between you and I. Okay. Sure. And that's the reason why everything's recorded, yeah, um, because there can't be any more accurate record than that, right? So, no, understood. Um, and the other thing I want to make sure you understand is that uh, you know you mentioned a second ago about uh, Miss Como um, being one of your uh, work associates. Um, so I don't know what's happened since November um, on the military side of things, um, but what we want to make people clear on is that uh, if you have been spoken to by any person in authority or any police officer about any of those cases. Um, I don't want what they may have said to you to uh, um, make you feel influenced or compelled to say anything to me today, okay? Whatever you might have felt influenced or compelled to say to them earlier, mm -hmm. you don't have to repeat it to me and you don't have to say anything further, okay? okay? But obviously what you do say, you know, for the third time is being yeah. recorded, right? So, um, understood. These first two attacks uh, happened uh, not that far from my place in Two Eagle. The second one did. Yeah. We didn't even know the first one had happened, but uh, I understand that was reasonably close as well, but the second one was uh, was very close. Yeah. So certainly at the time, the OPP did a door-to-door. Uh, -door. Yeah. yeah. And uh, within a couple of days, probably the same night, so I spoke with a couple of guys then. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm aware of that from mm -hmm. uh, looking at the different cases. And essentially, uh, Russell, uh, in a nutshell, that's what we wanted to, uh, to talk to you about, okay? Mm -hmm. um, those four cases are of uh, concern to us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you've kind of uh, almost hit the nail on the head about uh, some of our issues that kind of uh, make us want to talk to, to Russell Williams, okay? Because mm -hmm. um, essentially, uh, there's a, a, a connection um, between you and, uh, and all four of those cases. Would you agree? Geographically, and then I guess or I drive past. Uh, yes, I, I would yeah. have to say there is a, a connection. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's why uh, I'll be quite frank with you. That's why uh, things kind of um, uh, evolved when uh, the officers talked to you on Thursday night. Okay. Uh, we kind of went from there because uh, when I think you discussed with them the fact that you were a uh, uh, a colonel yeah. uh, at the base. Oh, I was in uniform at the time, so. Yeah, so pretty obvious, right? Yeah. Um, so essentially, uh, then the connection with Miss Como um, yeah. was made. Um, and I believe you're uh, a door or two down from one of those two uh, incidents uh, think, in Tweed. Uh, three doors down, yeah. Yeah. Very close, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So uh, those are some of the issues we wanted to discuss with you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just getting back to uh, these four incidents that we're talking about. Um, maybe you could just give me a little bit of history as to uh, your arrival in, in the uh, in the base in Trenton. When did you start working there? Friday on the day I was um, hmm. Friday on the day I was at home most of the time. Most of the day I had a sort of a stomach flu. Okay. In Ottawa or Tweed? In Tweed. In Tweed? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we backtrack then. So all day Friday, you're at home. Yeah. And then wh what time do you leave to go to the base to sleep there on the Friday night? Um, I'm not sure. Probably just you know went in for just before bed. Uh, so I probably left tweeted between eight and nine or so. Okay. Um, and you get to the base and. Spend the evening there and get up for the 5:30. Yeah. Okay. That's right. So we backtrack from there. Um, you. When did you arrive at your home? Uh, at the cottage. Can, I want to. I don't want to get confused between your home in Ottawa and the home yeah, in Tweed. Yeah, so, uh, no, I had been in Tweed all week. Yeah. Uh, the week prior now. Um, yeah, I think that's the case. I was in Tweed all week. Flew Saturday. Headed to Ottawa Saturday night. Okay. So um, if you didn't have the stomach flu on the Friday, what was your schedule that day? Eight, really. Okay. Um, 
What would have been my schedule? Just a standard schedule in the office. Okay. So, uh, office brief in the morning, a couple of, uh, couple of meetings. I can't remember what the specifics uh, were going to be. Okay, so um, Thursday night you slept at Tweed? Or you? Yep. All right. And what did you do Thursday during the day? Thursday during the day I was at the base again. Um, I think it was a fairly standard day. I can't recall exactly, but uh, yeah, nothing. I was not flying, so I was at the base. So I would have gone in early in the morning, back in the evening again. Okay. Do you remember what time you left the base that night? I don't remember anything peculiar, so I would say, uh, I don't know, probably seven to nine, somewhere in that range. Okay. And that's when you, you left? Left the base, yeah. And what, what that's a 45 minute transit. So. 45 minutes home? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to walk you through November, but I'm going to take you to a date that's probably pretty fresh in your mind, uh, uh, the day that, uh, that Marie Franz uh, coma. Yeah. Um, do you remember how you found out? I uh, do. Yeah, I was sent an email. Um, Well, as soon as the uh, the off staff and the base learned, they told me. Okay. So I got an email. I can't remember if it was late at night, early in the morning. It was certainly I saw it. Uh, I want to say first thing in the morning because I had just come back from Ottawa. I was in Ottawa for. Um, um, a set of meetings on one of the days. I can't remember what what day of the week we're talking about, but. Uh, yeah. No, I mean. Obviously, when your people gets killed, it uh, gets your attention. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I very much remember that coming in. And how did you know Marie Franz Como? I'd only met her once. Um, she was on a crew uh, I was on uh, just after I got to the base. Okay. So uh, I can't even remember. I think it was a one day trip. Uh, I did a, a number of trips uh, in Canada transporting um, our um, you know, troops, sort of first leg out of Edmonton. Uh, you know, we tend to hopscotch them across uh, until they get into theater. So, and anyway, I, I can't remember which trip it was, but uh, we did a number of them out to Edmonton just to, to pick up the troops, bring them to Trenton, and then uh, put a fresh crew on, and because uh, we'd fly out and back in the same day, so push on the edge of that, and uh, fresh crew on, and continue on after a couple hour delay. Okay. Do you know uh, roughly when that happened? That we were on the same crew. The, the time you met her, the one time there, yeah. It was soon after I got to the base, so uh, I, I don't remember exactly, but I would say in the first couple of months, so August, September. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, you got that email yeah. notifying you that something had happened. Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, any kind of a, a clear recollection as to how your schedule was going that week? Well, I can't remember what, again, what day that uh, the message came in, just a second. Um, No, I can't remember what day, day of the week, but I, um, I just think there was a whole bunch of activity uh, spun up as a result, obviously. No, I can't remember the day of the week. Um, I'm just trying to think through the news reports I read. No, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember what day that was, but... Uh, What I what we learned after the fact was that the um, the MPs had learnt uh, of her death. I think quite a bit after her body had been discovered. Okay. So I think what happened. Uh, I'm sorry. Just a second. Okay. So I think. If I remember correctly, the MPs learned late that evening. I can't remember when, obviously, her, her body was discovered. It was probably in the news reports. But uh, so they learned, and then they passed it to ops. That so they immediately passed it to me. Okay. The MPs work for the wing operations officer, so they go you know through their chain of command, and then as soon as the uh, the duty watch officer had that information, she advised me. Okay. Um, so again, that that along particular with, along week. Along with some others. 
Right, right. I'm sure it spread like wildfire. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, so that particular week, uh, do you have any recollection? Well, for instance, when you got the email, uh, yeah. do you remember where you were? I was at home in Tweed. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you remember if that was a week that you were um, reasonably stable in Trenton, or had you flown? No, I had been in Ottawa. I had been in Ottawa earlier in the week uh, for some meetings over in, uh, in Gatineau for one of the, um, it's actually for the C-17 acquisition. I was project director and when I was here in Ottawa for that, so just some follow-up stuff for that. Okay. So I had been here um, at some point in that week, again, I can't remember how the days all fell together, but um, I seem to remember that I got this word shortly after having come back from Ottawa. It seems to me it was the same week. So if we were to uh, to you know do a, a similar uh, investigation in your background, is there is there anything you can think of that anybody may have misinterpreted or anything uh, in your history that somebody might say Russell Williams uh, absolutely did this? No. Okay. Be very boring. What's that? It'll be very boring. <laughs> All right, because essentially that's what I'm looking at. Is it? Uh, um, you seem like a very intelligent person, and I think you can see how. Um, a surprise like that would uh, certainly set off some alarm bells in an investigation, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so the next thing we need to cover off is, uh, well, I'll just ask you this straight out. Uh, given the types of crimes we're investigating, uh, do you get much chance to uh, to watch television shows, CSI, things like that? I do watch, uh, I prefer Law & Order, but I do watch CSI occasionally, yes. Okay, so you have an idea of obviously the forensic capabilities, things like that, are out there. What would you be willing to give me today to help me um, move past you in this investigation? What uh, What do you need? Well, um, would you be willing to supply things like fingerprints, blood samples, sure. things like that? Yeah. Okay. Um, footwear impressions. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's what we're gonna we're gonna ask you to do. Okay. All right. Now, we have a process we have to go through to do that. Okay. Um, and for the blood sample, uh, I don't take the blood sample. We have specially trained officers that are trained to do that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to step out and make sure they're still available. Can I assume you're going to be discreet? It's possible, yeah. Because, uh, you know, this would have a very significant impact on the base if they thought you thought I did this. Well, uh, bottom line, Russell, that's one of the reasons we're here on a Sunday afternoon. Okay. Um, uh, the uh, the military certainly be of great assistance for, to us, especially mm -hmm. in relation to Ms. Como's investigation. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's certainly one of the things that went into our decision to, to give you a call at home today and see if we could deal with this today. Okay. So, okay. Um, it's tough to undo the rumor mill once it gets started. But I appreciate that. Okay. Now that you've had some time to, I mean, I know we've been throwing a lot of things at you here, but now you've had some time to, to think about things, um, is there anything uh, that you're concerned about uh, that buckle swab matching in any of those four residences? Um, is there, I guess, let me explain you what I'm getting down here, Russell, okay? Um, this is a significant investigation, as you can, yep, so as you can well imagine. Yep. Um, that uh, that DNA is going to be uh, significant in our investigation, both uh, you know quite possibly to help you, quite possibly to help us. Yeah, understood. I don't know yet. I don't know what the result is yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll go back to the example I gave you because it's a very similar uh, issue, I think. Um, and you talked about the idea of discretion here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about the idea that. Uh, um, you know, you, well, I think hopefully you appreciate the fact of how we approached you here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and essentially, uh, we have no issues with that. Okay. Um, we we talked recently about you know the whole idea of any unusual sex acts in your history. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing that can often happen in cases like this is that people um, become concerned about uh, um, things like extramarital affairs, mm -hmm. uh, indiscretions along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, is there any contact that you may have had with any of those four women um, that you may not want your wife to be aware of? Anything like that that we should know about to try and uh, explain why 
if if your DNA is found, it would help us understand why it may be there. Absolutely not. Okay. Can you think of any reason um, why we would find your DNA in any of those residences? No. Let's let's focus on well, for instance, uh, house, I believe. Let me just check the name there. Make sure I've got the right address. Talking about the house that was just uh, a couple of doors down from you there in uh, in Tweed. A couple um, of doors down was the, uh, Lori. I don't know her last name. I don't know. Mazzucati. I don't even know what her last name is, but uh, there's a, the, the woman down the road, three doors down. Was, yep. Her name is Lori. I don't know her last name. All right. Let me just make sure we're on the same page here. Uh, my understanding is she lived at the 76 Cozy Cove. Yeah, so she would be the one, the second one, uh, the second incident on your on your road there. Yeah. A couple of doors down. Ever been in her house? No. We met her once, I think the first summer um, we were there, so in 04. Okay. And that's what I'm getting at. I, I, again, this is a credibility issue, right? Yeah. Because I don't want to come and see you two weeks from now and say, you know, Russ, uh, yeah. our CSI people in that house. And uh, are you familiar with how C uh, DNA works? I think broadly, yes. I okay. guess so. Um, one of the challenges we have in 2010 with DNA is it's become so uh, precise that um, I guess the best way to explain it is I can think back 15 years ago when I started in. Uh, in violent crime investigation, yeah. um, for us to get a DNA match, the sample we had to find was, um, you know, probably would have filled half of one of these cups, okay. you know, because they destroy so much of the uh, the sample in the in the testing. Okay. Um, essentially, DNA has become more and more precise to the point where, when you and I walked in this room earlier today, mm -hmm. uh, we could have sat down, talked for 30 seconds, yeah. walked out, CSI officer could have come in three, four days from now, yeah. did some swabs here, and he would have found your DNA and my DNA, mm -hmm. and probably a lot of other people's DNA. Sure. Um, a little bit gross to think about, but essentially, uh, you know, as we talk, um, we, you know, a little bit of aspirate comes out of our mouth yeah. no, that uh, that contains our DNA, our blood, or uh, our skin cells contain our DNA, yeah. and that's what I'm getting at. If you were ever in Lori's residence, uh -huh. quite possibly, quite innocently, your DNA could be uh, in that residence. Has there ever been a time you've been in there? No. Okay. Um, what about the other lady down the road? On uh, I hadn't even heard that name, so no, I don't. I don't actually know who that was. Okay. Have you ever v visited uh, uh, Marie Franz Como at her residence? No. Okay. All right. Um, so you're quite positive there would be no reason why your DNA would be in any Absolutely. of those three locations. Okay. Um, did you know Jessica Lloyd even in passing for any reason? No, I didn't hear hear her name till it was on the news. Okay. And the reason I'm asking that uh, is because um, I know you were asked that question on Thursday night, and sometimes what we find, and again, this is one of those situations that can sometimes cause us to get in a lengthy investigation as somebody that mm -hmm. maybe doesn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. uh, but what what can happen sometimes is they, you know, somebody gets stopped by the police like you did, and they uh, they get asked that question, and people when they're stopped by the police they can be nervous, okay, mm -hmm. um, so they blurt out an answer. And then they start driving away, and they go, oh, "Why did I do that?" Because the problem is, is that once they uh, get asked again, then they feel compelled to maintain that answer for fear that if they change their answer, yeah. somebody could find it. You understand what I'm saying? I do. Okay. So I want to make sure that's not happening here. I don't care what you said to the officers on Thursday night no. last week. Um, if there's any uh, communication or contact between you and Jessica Lloyd, you've seen her picture, right, around town? Yeah. yeah okay. Absolutely. Ever seen her before? I don't. No, I would say I have not. Okay. All right. All right. And you mentioned something about uh, doing some renovations at your uh, at your property in Tweed there. Um, I think you said something earlier about tearing up carpet. Correct me if I'm wrong. But oh, yeah. Okay. When did all that happen? In 2004 or five. Okay. Any recent uh, renovations? No. Okay. All right. I want to make sure I'm covering all the bases here. Um, okay. What kind of tires do you have on your Pathfinder? I think um, I think they're Toyo 
Kimball. Jim LeBrand name, or sorry, the, uh, the make? Is, uh, um, I don't know. Sorry, the, the make is Toyo. Yeah. I don't know the model. Okay. I'll read this off to you, see if it rings a bell. Ever heard of, uh, does Toyo Open Country HTS that sounds make any right. sense? Yeah. Okay. When did you have those tires put on your Pathfinder? Well, it's the second version we've had of them, so uh, I think it might have been this past fall. They replaced other ones we'd had on the same. Okay. Well, Toyo, I can't say that they were the same, exactly the same model, but uh, our dealership here in Ottawa says they're very popular for the Pathfinders. So okay. They never good. They last a long time. All right. Um, I've had to. Uh, I think you were talking about the the whole idea of the MPs uh, helping us with our investigation mm -hmm. stuff like this. Uh, you have the same system as we do at our headquarters with the swipe cards. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things uh, one of our investigators did is they made a call while I was talking to you there um, because we were trying to work through that week of the uh, the 23rd of November. Okay. Um, 23rd being the Monday, uh, 24th being the Tuesday. Okay. Um, what what they've what they've told us is that, um, and I want to make sure I get this right, is that uh, on the 23rd, uh, your swipe card was being used at the base. Okay. Okay. Uh, on Tuesday, 24th, there was no use of your swipe card. Okay. okay. And then on the uh, the following days, uh, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, there was what appeared to be average activity of your okay. swipe card in the base. Does that make sense to you? It does. That that says that I was in Ottawa on the Tuesday. Okay. Do you remember where uh, in Ottawa you were? Yeah, I was in Gatineau with, uh, as I said, meeting about the uh, C-17. Okay. Um, now. Again, I want to be fair to you here. We're going back two months. Yeah. Um, are you sure that would have been the uh, the day you were in Ottawa? Well, only because I wasn't at the base. Okay. So I I can't remember honestly that that's the day I had the meeting in Ottawa. But uh, if I wasn't at the base, it was because I was here. Okay. Now, if that is the day you had the meeting in Ottawa, um, do you remember being at the base on the Monday, uh, the twenty third? And swiping your card in and out. Do you remember what you would have done that evening to, to, to get to Ottawa for that meeting? Like, would it be? Uh, I drove to Ottawa in the morning of the day of my meeting. So if it was the Tuesday, then I would have left uh, Tweed. It was a very foggy morning. Okay. Uh, that morning, and I drove in that morning. Okay. So I would not have been at the base uh, the day I was in Ottawa because the meeting started at eight thirty or something. Okay. So you leave the base. You would have went home to to your residence in Tweed, yep. And then you left Tweed in the morning and drove up to your meeting in Ottawa. Yeah. Okay. Um, you leave the the meeting in Ottawa is a daytime meeting, evening meeting, or do you remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a, a daytime meeting. Finished, I don't know, mid afternoon or so. Okay. We had lunch and then uh, finished. I think uh, my wife and I had dinner because she was here for work, and then I headed back. Okay. Um, well, that's these are the kind of things I'm trying to draw out here. That's helpful to us. Um, do you remember where you had dinner? <laughs> uh, well, I don't remember exactly the restaurant, but it was in Westboro because that's where our house was being built at the time. So we had dinner, you know, in a restaurant that we would expect to be able to frequent uh, once the house was finished. Okay. Remember how you paid? Uh, one of us would have paid by Mastercard. Yeah. Okay. Are, are you sure about that, or? Pretty sure. That's normally how we uh, okay. we pay for meals. All right. Can't and remember if it was me or my wife that paid, but one of us. Okay. And do you remember which restaurant it was again? No. Okay. All right. And you see where I'm getting at, right? I mean, th that can be very helpful for us because yeah. if we can track yeah. uh, that issue, right? Uh, oh, yeah. We can we can put somebody paying for a, a meal at a, at a location. Well, I was meeting with uh, you know 15 people or so that day. So. Okay. And what time did the meeting end? I would say between three and four. Okay. And um, are you sure that that's the same day you went out with your wife? Well, I think so. Yeah, because she was here and uh, I, I think that was the day we went to this restaurant in Westbury, yes. Okay. Um, you finished dinner and do you remember what you did that evening? I would have driven back to Tweed. Okay. And you would have... Now, 
again, I, I know we're talking two months ago here, but do you yeah. remember specifically having dinner and then driving back to Tweed, or uh, do you remember, uh, are you just guessing here? No, I'm not really guessing. I mean, I, I believe that this night at this restaurant was following the meetings in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, kissed my wife goodbye and headed back to Tweet okay. to go to work the next day. Okay. Um, all right. The, uh, the tires that you have on your truck, right, the reason I asked you about that is there, is there any time, I mean, uh, you recall uh, where you were stopped um, by the officers there? Yes. Okay. Did they explain to you what the significance so of that was? That was her house. That was her house. Yeah. Okay. So you remember that location? Yep. Yeah. Do you remember what the crossroad was? Or I don't think there was a crossroad. It's sort of just uh, on the south end of 37. Okay. Um, when you get stopped at that location, has there been a time in the recent uh, one or two weeks that uh, your vehicle has uh, left that road for any reason whatsoever? Have you driven into a field with your vehicle at all? Um, for any reason you can think of? No. Okay. Because um, I want you to rack your brain here. This is important. So yeah, yeah. is there anything you can remember doing that, uh, you know, would have caused you to, to uh, drive off the road no. at that section of roadway? No. That's my early, uh, that's the early part of the highway and I'm um, just head north. It's about 30 minutes from there to, uh, no, probably 20 from there to my house. Okay. Um, would it surprise you to know that uh, when the CSI officers were uh, looking around uh, her property uh, that they identified um, a set of tire tracks uh, to the north of her property, um, looks as if the vehicle left the road mm -hmm. and uh, drove along the north tree line of, of uh, Jessica Lloyd's property, okay? okay. Um, they took, uh, they examined those tire tracks. Mm -hmm and uh, they have contacts in the tire business obviously mm -hmm. tire tracks mm -hmm. are a major source of uh, evidence for us sure um, shortly after um, this investigation started they identified those tires as the same uh, tires on your pathfinder really yeah okay okay one of the other uh, one of the other things that they do to try and identify the type of vehicle that may have left those tires mm -hmm. well is they do two things they, they talk to witnesses mm -hmm. okay um, there was a, uh, a female police officer that actually drove by that location uh, that evening mm -hmm. and recalls seeing an SUV type vehicle in the field uh, to the north of Jessica Lloyd's house uh, consistent with a, a Pathfinder. Okay. Yeah. Could maybe consistent with other things but consistent with yeah. a Pathfinder. Um, and they, uh, what they also do to try and identify the type of the vehicle is they look at uh, what they call the wheelbase width, mm -hmm. okay? Because different vehicles, different makes, models have wheelbase width. So yeah. they can take those two sets of tire tracks, measure the distance between them, yeah. okay? And determine what the uh, the width is, sure. and then they can enter that into a vehicle database and it will spit out the types of vehicles, yeah. okay? Um, your Pathfinder's uh, wheelbase width is very, very close to the width of the, uh, of the tires uh, that were left in that field, mm -hmm. okay? Um, do you have any recollection at all of being off that road? No, it was not off the road, no. Okay. All right. Russell, um, is there anything you can think of, let's go talk about Marie Franz Como for a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. Is there any reason at all you can think of that during our investigation, obviously we're searching uh, computers, uh, uh, things like Blackberries, right? Mm -hmm. Electronic devices, uh, looking through houses for things that are in handwriting, written notes, diaries, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm not at liberty to tell you what the content was, but is there any reason at all you can think of why Marie France Como would have specifically referenced you in some of her, uh, in some of her writings? Not at all. No? No, absolutely not. Okay. Is there anything that she ever said to you that led you to believe that there might be something uh, more than a passing interest with her towards you? Not at all. No, we spent, you know, one flight together talking. I'd go back occasionally and talk. No. I, I, if that's the case, that's, a, that's very surprising. Okay. All right. Um, you have any questions for me right now? No. 
I'm just going to step out and see how things are going. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is a Sunday, but there's probably 60, 70 people working on this file, so there's a mm -hmm. lot of things happening. Sure. Uh, so let me go out and see what's happening, and then I'll uh, I'll come back in and uh, we'll hopefully continue. Okay. okay. I told you when I came in here uh, that I'm going to treat you with respect, and I've asked you to do the same for me. Um, we talked about the whole idea of how we've uh, approached you here. Okay. Uh, the, the trying to be as discreet as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the problem is, Russell, is every time I walk out of this room, there's another issue that comes up, okay? And it's not issues that point away from you. It's issues that point at you, okay? And I, wanna, I want you to see what I mean, mm -hmm. all right? This is the footwear impression of the person who approached the rear of Jessica Lloyd's house. Mm -hmm on the evening of the 28th and 29th of January, yeah. okay? All right, now I want you to keep in mind that this is slightly smaller, okay, in scale, okay? Okay. All right, that's not to scale. That's The footwear is actually bigger. Okay. If you look here on the ruler, you'll see that uh, one inch is just slightly smaller than an actual inch, okay? okay? But this is the way it prints off on the computer. Yeah. I'm gonna move this over so you can see what I mean, all right? Because essentially when you're dealing with footwear impressions, um, we have a gentleman on the OPP who's uh, basically world-renowned. Uh, his name is John Norman. Mm -hmm. And essentially with footwear impressions, uh, you're in a situation where you're, you're pretty much in the area of, uh, of fingerprints, mm -hmm. okay? And essentially what we're talking about here is, especially when you start adding in other pieces of, of uh, information that mm -hmm. uh, support uh, an investigative position, yeah. okay? This is a photocopy of the boot that uh, you took off your foot yeah. just a little while ago, okay? Yeah. Now, I'm not an expert in footwear impressions, so I rely on the experts. Footwear impressions are very much like, uh, like fingerprint comparisons, okay? You take a look at this print, and again, this is one print. This mm -hmm. person walked through, there's several different prints to compare, mm -hmm. so we're going to get features off of one print to compare, features off of another print to compare. Yeah. These are identical. Okay. Your vehicle drove up the side of Jessica Lloyd's house. Your boots walked to the back of Jessica Lloyd's house on the evening of the 28th and 29th of January. Okay. You want discretion. We need to have some honesty, okay? Because this is this is getting out of control really fast, Russell. Okay, really, really fast. Hmm. This is getting beyond my control. All right, I came in here a few hours ago and I called you the way I called you today because I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. But you and I both know you were at Jessica Lloyd's house, and I need to know why. You need to explain it because this is the other problem we're having, Russell. Okay. Again, these decisions are made by me. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's a search warrant being executed at your residence in Ottawa. Okay. So your wife now knows what's going on. There's a search warrant being executed at the, your residence in Tweed, and your vehicle's been seized. Okay. You and I both know they're going to find evidence that links you to these situations. Okay. You and I both know that the unknown offender male okay, on Marie France Como's body is going to be matched to you quite possibly before the evening's over. Okay. 
This is a major investigation. The Center of Forensic Science is on call 24 hours a day helping us with this. Mm -hmm. Your opportunity to take some control here and to have some explanation that anybody is going to believe is quickly expiring. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're applying, the investigators now applying for a warrant to search your office. All right. These aren't decisions that we can say yes or no to. This is the practical steps mm -hmm. in an investigation like this. And Russell, to me for a second, okay? When that evidence comes in, when that DNA match, when that phone rings and somebody knocks on this door, mm -hmm. your credibility is gone, okay? Because this is how credibility works, all right? And I know you're an intelligent person and you probably don't need to hear this explanation, but I also know your mind's racing right now, okay? Because I've sat across a lot of people in your position over the years, mm -hmm. okay? The bottom line is, is that as soon as we get that that piece of evidence that solidifies it, mm -hmm. DNA, okay? As soon as the expert in footwear impressions, the expert in tire impressions calls and says, yes, I've examined those and they're mm -hmm. a match, mm -hmm. it's all over. Because as soon as that happens, where's your credibility? Where's your believability? You're just another, uh, and again, don't take this wrong, Okay, but you can see if you step outside this room in your mind and imagine how people are going to view you, okay, if the truth comes out after the clear evidence is presented to you, when you finally go, okay, I'm screwed now, mm -hmm. what are we going to do? Russell. You know there's only one option. What do you what do you what other option is there? What's the option? Well, I don't think you want the cold blooded psychopath option. I might be wrong. Okay, because I don't get me wrong, I've met guys who actually kind of enjoyed the notoriety, got off on it. Got off on having that label. Bernardo being one of them. I don't see that in you. If I saw that in you, I wouldn't be back in here talking to you, quite frankly. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you got me fooled. I don't know. This is over. And it can have a, a bad ending where Jessica's parents continue to wonder where her daughter's lying. And I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's a huge search still underway, and it'll continue. It'll continue until her body's found. That might even happen tonight, for all I know. Once that happens, then I don't know what other cards you would have to play. So what are we going to do?
Hold me breasts, please. Okay. What are we gonna do, Russ? Jessica somewhere where we can find her easily? Like, is this something where I can make a call and tell somebody to go to a location and they're going to find her, or is this something where we have to go and, and uh, take a walk? Which direction are we heading in here? Russ, maybe, maybe this would help. Can you tell me what the issue is you're struggling with? the issue you're struggling with. It's hard to believe this is not Why is that? Why is it hard to believe? decision was it, and we're going to find out the answer to this anyway, but whose decision was it to issue the, uh, the directive to the base personnel that nobody had to speak to the police and to seek legal counsel before they were questioned? My I don't think that was... My understanding that direction came from somebody that reports to you. 
What do you think they're well, going to say, Russ? No, no. What do you think they're going to say? All right, and and let's let's step back for a second here, okay? I really don't think it benefits you or makes you look any better to start debating the little issues. No, okay? no, but that is news to me. Okay. I have a legal officer that reports to me yeah. who may have given that direction. Okay. But that's the first time I've heard it. If that's true, okay. that's the first time I've heard that. All right, and that may be the case, but how does it look? All right. We're not even dealing with something that's really even evidence because it's not needed. I mean, when no, you, no, have, when you have DNA and all this other stuff, that's not even. What really was the direction? I don't recall, but it was something along the lines of, of uh, telling the people on the base that they didn't, uh, they weren't required legally to speak with police, and they should seek legal counsel before they decide to speak. But okay. well, if that was if that was actually said, it would not have been to the base at large. It it may have been to the individual, the uh, the boyfriend who was the suspect. Okay, that my understanding it went out to all personnel. No, absolutely. Maybe, not. maybe no, only under your command. I don't know. It did. Okay, okay, that's I, fine. I didn't ever see it. That's fine. Now let's get back to the issue. What's that? So you talk about perception. My only two immediate concerns from a perception perspective are what my wife must be going through right now. Yeah. And the impact this is going to have on the Canadian forces. Where do we go? Russ, is there anything you want from me? Is there anything you want me to explain? Is there something missing that you're struggling with that I can shed some light on for you? I'm struggling with how upset my wife is right now. Russ, what are you looking for? I'm concerned that they're tearing apart my wife's brand new house. So am I. But if nobody tells them what's there and what's not, they don't have any choice. Computers will be brought to Microsoft in California. They'll be, they'll be picked apart. You can't erase things from computers. It doesn't happen. I'm sure you've seen that. I'm sure. That's pretty common knowledge these days. It just doesn't happen. There's, they sell programs that uh, to try and help people clean their computers of stuff, and our guys are pulling that stuff out all the time. The FBI is pulling that stuff out all the time. This investigation will end up costing no less than $10 million easy and they will say no to nothing any request this major case manager makes on this case they've already been told it's approved don't even bother asking What am I doing, Russ? I put my best foot forward here for you, bud. I really have. I don't. I don't know what else to do to to make make you understand the impact of what's happening here. So do I. So 
How do we do that? Well, we start by telling the truth. Is she close to where she lives? I've got maps of that general area. Which town is she near? Why don't we start there? I'm not sure if you give me a map of that um, covers Caligar down to the highway and over to Tweed. I'll show you. Let me see what I got here. I might have something. Is she inside, outside? the biggest area I have there, Russ? Yeah, you need more. You need a real map. So where am I going on the, uh, on here to get to her? In this block here. Okay. So you're pointing to... A detailed map of that area and I'll show you where she is. Okay. Is she close to a road? Yep. All right. Um, is it something where... Is she, is she buried or is she somewhere where if you walk there you would would fairly easily see her. It's here. Okay. So she's south of 7, uh, east of Tweed, mm -hmm. west of 41. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's this road here? Not sure. Neither am I. Okay. I'll be right back, okay? Do you want any water or anything? Sure. Okay. I'll be right back. How long has she been there for? over a week. Was it fairly quick from the time she left? Friday night. Friday night? Yeah. So where was she between Thursday night and Friday night? In Tweed. With you? Yeah. How long was she alive for? Almost 24 hours, not quite. Russ, you're doing the right thing here. Okay. Well, again, my interest is in uh, making my, my wife's life a little easier. And okay. her family as well. Wow. We share that interest. But there's no, uh, your time in Ottawa is wasted, really. I'll tell you where the memory sick cards are. Where are they? They're in the house there, but... In Ottawa? Yeah. Whereabouts? Um, some in the camera bag, which they would have found in my office. Mm -hmm. And in the when you walk into the office on the left side, there's a um, uh, desk of uh, drawers, set okay. of drawers, like a filing cabinet, wooden, Ikea. In one of the top two drawers, and there's a plastic divider. Yeah. And there's, uh, inside there, there are two memory cards. Okay. Which are blank, but I'm sure they can be re- uh, And whose images right. are on those cards? Uh, well, uh, I've erased them, but I expect uh, you'll be able to 
draw images of uh, Jessica and I. What about Marie? There may be images on there as well. And the two women from September? Yep. Okay. Do you have those images stored anywhere else? Yeah, there are um, two hard drives in the house in Ottawa. I can draw you a little picture if you like. Sure. Do you want to do that now while I'm sure. getting them out? Okay. <coughs> Want anything to eat or anything? Leave that with you. Okay. Somebody running around looking for an actual map, but uh, I did the same thing with uh, the Google Maps, just have to blew them up a little bit more. Um. This is the this is the biggest of the area. I mean, this might have better parameters for you. There's Tweet. What road is that, Cary? You know, south of, can't read that word, uh, East Hungerford? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, there it is there. Okay. How far off the road is she? 40 feet. Is she, is she covered with anything? She's she wrapped up. In she's what? on the surface. Just a gray something or other. Cover. Barry, the obvious question I'm going to have for you is when they go there, and they'll be there shortly, mm -hmm. they're going to find her? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll be right back. You look like you want to say something. Just that the, this place, my wife, it's been a dream for a better part of a year, so I'm keen to get them what they need and so they can leave her alone. Okay, well, we're going to do our best to keep that as low-key as possible, okay? What do you want to talk about? Because it's uh, pretty wide open now, eh? Yeah. What do you want to know? Well, do you want to work forwards or backwards? Doesn't matter. Well, why don't we start with Jessica? Okay. How does that start for you? Um, I saw her in her house on her treadmill. Wednesday night, I guess. Then I noticed she wasn't um, there Thursday. So I got into the house to look around. Then, um, and then left. Noticed she'd come home. So I went back in. Through the uh, back patio door. 
while she was uh, sleeping. So I woke her up, didn't, um, didn't hit her, she only hit her once, Friday night. Well, so I raped her in uh, in her house, and then I took her to the car and took her to Tweet. Um, what did the hit on the back of the head do? Well, I was surprised that uh, her, her skull gave way. She was there and immediately unconscious. And I strangled her. Okay. What did you hit her with? Flashlight. Okay. In the house or outside the house? In the house. Yeah, they'll find uh, signs of that. Where in the house did this happen? In the main portion, just in front of the fireplace. What do you mean they'll find signs of it? Oh, there's quite a bit of blood. I hadn't expected. I would expected to knock her out. But obviously generated a lot of blood. What did she bleed onto? The floor. It's just a tile floor. Okay. Did you clean it up or did you? I, I wiped it up. I know it'll be uh, easily spotted. Well, what makes you think that? Like, if I walked in that house right well, now, would I see it? You wouldn't see it not at all, but, uh, you know, all right, science so will, uh, will show it, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so when that happened, was she, did she have clothes on or was she naked? Yeah, she was dressed. Okay. So when we find her, is she going to have those clothes on too? Yeah. All right. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Marie France uh, Como. There was an open window in the basement of her uh, her house when she was away. I went in there um, a couple of nights before uh, she came home. Looked around. I went back in there uh, late at night when she was at home. She was on the phone in her bedroom. She actually discovered me in the basement. She was trying to get her cat to come upstairs and the cat was in the basement had seen me and was fixated on me in the corner. She couldn't get the cat up so uh, she came downstairs trying to get the cat and uh, I'm not sure why she uh, 
came over to me. I guess the cat was staring at me, and she was wondering what the cat was staring at. The lights were on. So when she spotted me, I uh, had the same flashlight. I subdued her. Tied her up, brought her upstairs. And uh, strangled her later in the morning. Well, more suffocated her. Right. Some tape. Left her there. How did you subdue her? And when you say subdued her in the basement, what did you do? Well, I had the same flashlight. And, uh, She, she saw me right away, so I was just uh, I hit her a couple of times and around her head, try and knock her out. Didn't, but um, she was bleeding a little bit. And eventually, um, drew a struggle, subdued her. Any blood from, from that struggle? Oh, yeah. No, not, not a whole bunch, but uh, the flashlight did break her skin a couple of times. Okay. What area of the basement did that take place in? I was hiding behind the furnace, so she spotted me right there. Okay. Did she recognize you? No, I had uh, stuff on my face. Um, so then you go upstairs, and you said uh, she suffocated? Well, I suffocated her. I put tape on her, and I put tape on her mouth, and then I put tape on her uh, nose and held it there so she couldn't breathe. Okay. Um, what kind of tape was it? What happened to it? Uh, well, I took it with me and uh, can't can't remember what actually I did with that tape, but uh, probably threw it in the garbage. Did you use tape for any other purposes? Um, did she ever recognize you through this whole episode? No. What did you say you had on your face? I had just a, a cover for my head, just a, you know, a sports you know, pullover type, like just a little cap kind of thing. Okay. Just a, I can't think, you know, a wicker or something. And a, um, just a headband over my nose and mouth. So it covered most everything but my eyes. Okay. Um, now this flashlight, where is that now? In Tweed. In the house? Yeah. What kind of flashlight is it? It's a red uh, 3 double D. Um, I'm not sure what brand it is, but it's a metal, you know, one of these aluminum. It's like a big, um, I don't remember what brand of you know, aircraft aluminum flashlights are to see a lot of. Anyway, it's a big, bigger one of those. 
Um, did you take anything out of uh, Marie France's house or Jessica Lloyd's house? Uh, yeah, some of their uh, underwear. Okay. That's all. And where is that? Um, It's in some boxes in the basement here in Ottawa, in that rec room. So we just moved in, so there are boxes everywhere. So on the same side as the furnished room, sort of in the back against the wall. Okay. What do the other boxes look like? Um, I think one's a scanner, the box for my scanner. Mm -hmm. They're, they're all right next to each other, so a quick look through the boxes there will find them. Okay. How much underwear is in those boxes? Um, uh, probably 60 pieces or so. Don't. All women's? Yeah, 60 pieces of theirs. Of whose? Of Jessica's and... Uh, Many so you took sixty pieces from between the two of them? Yeah. Okay. I think so. All right. Um, and they're in a, like when you talk about a scanner, is it a computer scanner box? Well, a computer scanner is up in the office, and its box is down in the basement. So okay, it's inside that box. Does any of the underwear in those boxes belong to anyone other than Marie Franz or uh, or Jessica? Um. Yeah, there's some from each of the other two women. Okay. Uh, why don't we talk about those two women? Mm -hmm. um, so the first one happened on the 16th, and I don't know why, I can't recall their names, but uh, the lady that was uh, lived closer to you. No, Lori was closer to me. Okay. So the first, uh, the first one, mm -hmm. I had just spotted her from our boat, actually. And I got into the house while she was uh, asleep. Noticed that she was alone. And uh, just hit her with my hand while she was sleeping. subdued her, mostly just my weight on top of her, um, had her take off her pajamas, took some pictures, took some of her underwear and left. And the other woman? Same kind of deal. Got in through the back of the house. She was sleeping in her, um, not in her bedroom, but in her, you know, in front of the TV. Very much the same story. Anything different about that story? Oh, yeah. Pretty much the same story and exactly the same story or two different things, right? Yeah, no, uh, not much different at all. Um, I did have the flashlight that time. I hit her with a flashlight. Didn't think it would knock her out. Did. So, and I subdued her with my weight. Took off her clothes, took some pictures, and left. Why do you think these things happen? Oh. Have you spent much time thinking about that? About why? Yeah.
Well, let me let me ask you this: Did you like or dislike these women? I didn't know any of them. Okay. I had met Maddie Thomas that one time in that in her uh, airplane. Okay. No, I guess I guess when yeah, when you're going through these things, um, are you? Would, well, well, let me let's talk about Jessica because she was there with you for the whole day, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of feelings were you experiencing while you were with her that day? She's a very nice girl. Can you tell me why you killed her? Right. Do you know why you killed her? Well, I think I killed her because I knew that uh, her story would be recognized. Her story would be recognized? How do you mean? Well, because she knew I was taking pictures. Mm-hmm. So because of the um, two um, stories in Tweed, That would have been a fairly, yeah, been quite obvious. So if you didn't take pictures, what would you have done with her? I don't know. I mean, she's at your house, right? Um, well, let, let me ask you this, is it uh, two lived? Right? And two died. What's, what was the difference in your mind between? Well, the, uh, you know, the attention the first two got, um, was very much fo focused on, obviously, or for obvious reasons, uh, the pictures I took. So anybody else telling stories about pictures, right, would have been a fairly straight line. Okay, but when when this thing happened with Marie Franz, it was was did you believe that you were already a suspect for what happened in Sweet? No. So what, what were you concerned about? Well, because um, I was pretty sure that, uh, you know, she was serving military, right? Mm -hmm. It would have been, uh, it would have been difficult for investigators to ignore that connection. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Um, well, let's go back to Jessica then. Okay. Um, you see her on the Wednesday night. Okay. On her treadmill. Mm -hmm. How do you see her? She was in the basement, window wide open, on a treadmill. So I drove by. Okay. Did you, did you stop to look at the house, or how, do, how does that catch your eye as you drive by? Well, I was looking to see who was, who was where. Don't know that area very well, so I was just keeping my eyes open. Okay. So you spot her on the Wednesday? Yeah. Um, do you just keep on going, or did you just stop and take a closer look that no. night or anything? No? Okay. And 
you went back on the Thursday night, right? Yep. So you go back on the Thursday night and you went you went into the house before she came home? <coughs> yeah, she was out. Um, yeah, she was out, got in through the kitchen window, it's unlocked, everything else was locked. Okay. So you're in there doing what? Looking around, looking around to see who lived in the house. It was just her. Okay. And then what do you do? Well, I left the house and then uh, she came home. I'd been out of the house very long. So I watched for a little bit to see if she was alone. She was. You go in, she's sleeping, and what do you do? Well, I, I snuck up to the side of her bed, expecting to uh, try to knock her out. She woke up. But she did, as I said. So I didn't hit her. What did you say? I said, lie down on your tummy. Okay. She did. I tied her up. What tie her up with? Some uh, rope I brought. So she's on her stomach. How are you tying her up? Okay. Just tying her hands behind her back. Okay. She got clothes on at that point? Mm -hmm. What kind of clothes? S sweats. All right. You tie her hands behind her back and then, then what happens? I took her clothes off. Okay. And then what happened? I raped her. A rape could mean a lot of different things. Uh, what kind of sexual act it took place? Just, uh, vaginal and oral. Okay. Oral. Who was performing the oral sex? Um, no, me on her and her on me. Okay. Any, uh, any condoms used or anything like that? No. No? So the, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, vaginal intercourse, uh, her playing, performing oral sex on you and you performing oral sex on her? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what order those things occurred in? Yeah. I uh, started with the oral sex, then I raped her, and then later on I made her perform oral sex on me. Okay. Anything, any kind of conversation happening when this is going on? Yeah, a little bit. What was being said? Well, I threatened her before she uh, before she 
before I had her perform oral sex. What did you say? Well, I put a zip tie around her neck. I said uh, that I would pull it if I didn't like what uh, she would do. Okay. So she did what you told her to do? Mm hmm Any issues there? Any reason to pull it? No. So do you remember if you ejaculated at that point? Or at any point? Um, not at that point, but later on. Okay. So the oral sex finishes, and then what happens next? Well, I continued um, to rape her, and I had her put on some of her underwear. Took some pictures. Lots of pictures. And then uh, got her dressed, walked back to the truck. Okay. At what point did you decide that she was going to leave with you? I'm not sure. That wasn't um, necessarily always the plan. At some point, uh, I was there for three, three hours, three and a bit. Okay. Um, do you remember the conversation about leaving? Was there any? Did she say anything about that, or? What was she saying um, to you? She was, um, certainly cooperative. Okay. A cooperative can mean a number of different things. Was she excited about leaving with you? I, mean, I don't want to be sarcastic, but... Um, no, no, she just didn't put up too much of a fuss. Did she try and negotiate with you at all, or? I don't know. What did she say? Well, I told her that I would uh, let her go later on. Okay. So when you take her out of your house, is she is she still bound, or? Yep. How how is that done? Just uh, hands behind her back. Okay. What about her feet? Anything there? No, nope, she was walking freely. Okay. Barefoot or? No, no, she had those brown suede shoes on that had been reported. Okay. So where does she sit in your truck when you get to the truck? Front seat, passenger side. Okay. And where do you go? Straight to Tweed. Straight to your house in Tweed or straight yep. to just the town? To the house. No stops anywhere? No. Okay. What time do you remember what time you arrived there? I don't exactly, but I'd say between four thirty and five thirty. Okay. All right. When you were uh, when you were first there before she came home, do you remember did anybody come to the door at all when you were in the house? No, I think somebody had come home, uh, somebody had come to the house just before she did. Because I thought it was her, but then they left. I was outside at the time. Did you see who that person was or what kind of vehicle they were no. in or anything? No. I saw the lights and I assumed it was her, and then all of a sudden they left, so I don't know what happened. Okay. Um, where were you when that first vehicle pulled up? In the back. Back here. Okay. So you didn't have a view of the vehicle, you could just tell that there was a vehicle there, is that fair? Okay. So you get home, what, 4.35 you say? Hmm. Okay. And then what happens?
Uh, well, she um, she just go to the bathroom and uh, get a quick shower, wash her. Then we went to, into my bedroom. to sleep a little bit. She was tied up. How was she tied up at that point? Smoothly under her eye. I put um, tape over her eyes from the beginning. So that's what she had. Okay. When they find her, is that tape going to be there? Or was it ever removed? What kind of tape? Dark tape. All right. The duct tape that you used, where's uh, where's that roll? Uh, it's all gone. It, um, I used it to. I used the rest of it to uh, bind her, bind her body. So, by all gone, is it is it with the body now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you said, who went to sleep when you came home? You had a sh or she had a shower? Well, we both got in. I washed her off after she'd been to the bathroom. We both went to sleep. But she was tied up, and I had tied the rope. You know, so I could fall asleep a little bit, and she could move without waking me up. I'm trying to picture how that would be. So the rope's tied to what on her? It's tied to her hands. Behind her back. Okay. And it and then the rope just wrapped around me a couple of times, so there was no slack. Okay. Do you remember how long you slept for? Not long, maybe a couple hours. Do you know if she slept? I don't know. Okay. So you wake up and, and it wasn't I mean they were up and down, up and down. So it wasn't two hours straight, it was about two hours in bed, but wasn't much sleep, just lying there probably. So you wait, you get up from that, and, and what happens next? Um, she had a seizure, actually. She felt it coming on, and. Um, She'd had some before. Lasted uh, not quite a while. Got her dressed into the uh, family room and anyway, she uh, she recovered. She got. Uh, yeah, it was obviously stress, but uh, yeah, probably probably went on for about fifteen minutes. Sort of it. So, yeah. how do you know she had them before? She told me. Did she tell you why she gets them? Well, she suggested it was stress. Yeah, so she felt herself you know, start to tense up and said she thought she was going to have a seizure. You know, so she was, she was, it was, you know, convulsions is what she was saying. So she reco recovered from that? Yep, she um, went, I stayed with her and talked her through it and made sure she didn't bite her tongue. Okay. And then what happened? Well, then we had a little lie down right there because she was obviously exhausted. 
never heard of her. And she went to sleep. Wait for an hour or so. And I had told her um, earlier that before I let her go, I wanted to take some pictures of her in her underwear. And uh, have sex with her. So after she'd had uh, a rest for an hour or so. I had her uh, put on. A number of different outfits she had. I'm sorry. Put on a number, you know, pairs, panties, bra that she had. Okay, got taken from the house. So she put those on and I took pictures. Okay. Are you in any of these pictures? Yep. What what kind of what kind of images are you in? Um Well, I'm with her. There's on the hard drives. You'll see there's video as well. So there's video of the um, yeah. almost four hours, I guess. Of what? Well, of. Uh, Initially at her place of uh, raping her, and then uh, you know, so I was running the video, and then taking still pictures. So the video pretty much covers everything. Did you use video at other places? Uh, at uh, Marie Frances as well. And is that video on the hard drives? Yeah. Same type of uh, activity? Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't have her put on any stuff. Okay. So Jessica poses for these pictures and there's videos and, um, and then what happens? Then... Um I got her dressed because she thought she was leaving. Got a bite to eat. Fruit. And then as we were walking out, uh, I struck her on the back of the head. Okay. When did you decide to do that? Well, I was uh, pretty sure that I wasn't going to let her leave, but um, you know, the idea of striking her on the head was developed in the afternoon. And what was that strike supposed to accomplish in your mind? What was the intent of, of doing that? Well. I thought I would be able to knock her out, and then I was I was going to strangle her. Okay. So when you actually do strike her, what, what's the result? Her skull gave way a little bit. Felt like, and there was a lot of blood, so I think that's what happened. She was immediately unconscious. And then I um, 
strangled her. How'd you strangle her? Uh, the same rope. Just put her on her neck. Okay. While she was uh, unconscious. Now, what happened to the zip tie that was around her neck earlier? I took it off. Uh, around that, I guess. Did you take it off before you put the rope around her neck, or, or after, or do you remember? After she was dead. Oh, okay. So the zip tie was around her neck while you used the rope? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you leave the rope around her neck? No. Okay. And how did you know she was dead? She, um, well, her body stopped moving. So what did you do after that? I uh, I bound her up. To a, there's a field position. And uh, cleaned up the floor. You say you bound her up. Is that, are you referring to the duct tape that you talked about earlier? Yeah. Okay. So then what did you? I um, put her in the garage. It was very cold. And then I went into the base. Okay. Why'd you go to the base? Pardon me? Why'd you go to the base? Because I was flying early the next morning. Okay. So what time did you leave to go to the base? Well, I told you about between 9 and 10 or so. On the Friday night? Yep. Okay. So you fly and... Then I drove home to Ottawa. So which night would you? Saturday night. So you land uh, and uh, what time are you landing? Six six thirty. Okay. Saturday night. Did you go by the house in Tweed on your way to Ottawa? Or? No. Um, so you drove straight home to yeah. Ottawa. What time did you get there at? Do you remember? Sometime before midnight. I can't quite remember, but uh, I think I went in the office first, did some work. So I think I got home to Ottawa just before midnight, something like that. I think. I'm not sure. I I slept for a little bit in, at the Tim Hortons in Brockville. So it might be later. I honestly can't remember when I got to Ottawa. But okay. Yeah. Midnight-ish, Saturday. Mm -hmm. So you get home, you're in Ottawa, what do you do? Go to, go to bed or yeah. stay up? Okay. So then what do you do the next day? Well, my wife and I did some stuff. I can't remember what uh, what was going on that day. You know, putting together the new house. And I headed back to Tweed that night. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Sorry. Um, no, I didn't. I had uh, I had Monday off. 
That's right. I had Monday off, and then I was visiting uh, one of the units in Ottawa on Tuesday. So I didn't head back to Tweed till Tuesday night. Okay. <coughs> Get back to Tweed, and what happens next? I uh, took Jessica's body to that spot. Okay. That happened on Tuesday night? Just this past Tuesday, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what time that was? It was pretty late. It was uh, midnight-ish. I'd say between midnight and one. On... Uh, Wednesday morning. Okay. Um, what made you decide to, to measure that distance, that point seven kilometers? That's just the way I am. Numbers. I have to know the numbers. Okay. And um, how did you leave her? I just left her tucked behind a, um, a fairly large rock. Is that duct tape still on her? Mm -hmm. um, and what else is on her? A couple of towels wrapped around her head. And uh, the top and pants she was wearing, jeans. Okay. Did you ever go back there? Um, what other type of cleaning and things like that did you do? Anything else to kind of cover your tracks that you can think of? I vacuumed the house and I uh, wiped the, the floor, washed the floor. Okay. What about your truck? Did you do anything with that? Just uh, wash today because it was a mess and vacuum. Um, so Marie Franz, when did uh, when did it first occur to you to go to her house? Uh, well, probably in October, October, November. Not quite sure, but somewhere in that time frame. And do you, re you remember why you that you thought to um, to do that? Uh, well, you know, she had said she lived alone when the one time I met her. Mm -hmm. trying to understand like, why her versus, you know, the dozens of other women you probably come across on a daily basis. I don't know. Yeah, I... Yeah, I went out there uh, when she wasn't home just to see where she lived. And When did you do that? A couple of nights before. How did you know her address? I was on the roll for the base. Okay. So when you go out there a couple of nights before, do you remember what night that was? When you were there the first time? I don't. Uh, but I, it was within two or three nights, I think. Okay. Probably, well, no more than four or anything, something like that. And did you actually go into her house on that occasion, or did you, uh, okay. So what happened that night? How'd you, how'd you get into her house? This window on the side of the basement, side window. Okay. 
just a back step a bit. How did you get to her house that, that first night you went there? I drove. What did you drive? Uh, I think I drove my truck. Okay. Kind of find her. Do you remember where you parked it? Yep, yeah, I parked it. Um, it's a bit of a division in the residential areas there. I parked it on another side. Six, seven hundred meters away. Okay. So not on her street, on mm -hmm. a different street? Do you remember what street you parked on? No, but it's uh, actually it might be the same street, but there's an interruption in the street where there's a construction zone. So there's a pathway in between. So it, it, I think it's probably the same street. Okay. So uh, you go to her house, and when you went there that night, did you know that she was away? Uh, I'm not sure if I knew entirely, but I. I, I think I thought she was away. Okay. Is that based on her schedule, or, or how would how would you know? Uh, that? Well, my yeah, because I fly with the squadron, I have access to the schedule, and okay, it's a slightly different schedule she has, but that's probably how I know. You don't know for sure. I think that's probably how I know. Okay. So you go to her house. And what do you do that night, the first night? Well, I looked around and uh, I make sure that she was living there alone. And I'm sorry, did you, did you say, I can't remember if you said, how, how did you get in? Same, same way, about side basement window. Side basement window? Do you remember what kind of window it is? Like what made it? Uh, well, I just noticed it was well, I noticed the flashlight. I could see that it was not locked. It had been opened slightly. So I removed the screen, slid it open, went in. Okay. So you go in and uh, you're in her house, figuring out she lives alone. And uh, do you do anything that night? Yeah, I was playing with her. Uh, Underwear. You mean playing with her underwear? No. Oh, wearing it. Okay. Doing anything else? No, I didn't, didn't touch her stuff. What do you mean you didn't touch her stuff? I mean, you touched her underwear, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Nothing else. Okay. Did you take any of the underwear with you that night? Yeah, a few pieces. And where did you find the underwear when you went in? In her drawer. Was it clean? Was it used? For clean. Okay. Um... Anything else you can remember doing that evening? That you no. All right. So um, after that first visit, did you return again before meeting up with her? No. Okay. So which day did you go to her house when she was there? Well, the night before I went to Ottawa, so I think that was Monday night. Okay. All right. Um, so let's walk through that. Uh, what time do you think you got there? About 11 or so, probably. 10, 30, 11. Okay. Yeah, so she was on the phone in her room. Hear that uh, from the backyard. I got in through the uh, side window. The same basement window? Mm -hmm. How could you hear from the backyard? What was. Uh, Just hear her on the phone. Front beside, you know, beside the house. I could 
hear through the walls that she was on the phone. Okay. Any idea who she was talking to or what she was talking about? No. Couldn't hear that well. Okay. So you go in through the basement window. And what are you wearing when this is happening? Sweatshirt and dockers, I guess. And the uh, two pieces on my head. Okay. And where are those two pieces now? Pieces that you wore on the head? Uh, they're probably in my bag, in uh, my luggage bag, and Edison in the bedroom. What does your luggage bag look like? That's a blue duffel bag type thing. It's right beside the bed. Okay. Is it the only blue duffel bag in your bedroom? Mm -hmm. Um And these pieces, what do they look like again? It's a blue headband. Okay. Standard blue you know, winter headband. And uh, black skull cap. Any insignias or anything on them? Yeah, there are, but I don't know what they are. The know. blue headband has something stands, uh, you know, stitched, a, a name of some sort stitched on it. And the uh, skull cap has some sort of emblem, on, white emblem on the black. I don't know what it is. Are they like sports emblems or company emblems? or? Um, it's the manufacturers. Okay. Anything else in that blue uh, duffel bag? I think so. Is it full of, of things? Other just, than? just my clothes. Okay. Um, so you go in, do uh, you remember what you had on your feet? In the house there? When you went to Marie France's house. Uh, probably running shoes. There wasn't snow on the ground. So you go in, and you're in the basement. And uh, whereabouts in the basement are you? Um, by the furnace. Okay. And what are you doing? Like, what, uh, what's your, what's your sort of plan at that point? I was waiting for you to go to bed. Okay. And how long did that take? Well, she didn't. And then she came down looking for the cat. All right. And uh, what happens next? Well, as I described, I subdued her. Gave her the flashlight. But essentially, you know, wrestled her to the ground and tied her up. And what did you use to tie her up? Same rope, green rope. It's in tweed. Is it just green or like uh, how long is this piece of rope? It's probably uh, 20 feet. It's, it's a boat, boat rope. It's got some red specks in it, I think. Okay. Is there lots of ropes in tweed or is this probably the only rope? No, this, uh, there are two, two lengths. Two lengths of the same green rope? And were they both used? Uh, well, I, I only ever had one with me, so I don't know if I used the same piece both times or not, but only two lengths of rope. Okay. So you tie her, tie her up. How did you tie her up when you, after you said that? And what is she wearing at that point? She wasn't wearing anything to start with. So when she came down to the basement, she had no clothes on? Mm -hmm. She had some sort of a shawl over her shoulder. Okay. Which she immediately dropped when she saw me. Did she say anything when she saw you? She did. She called out, you bastard. Okay. And then what happened? 
then I subdued her as I described. By hitting her with that red flashlight? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, they were more glancing. Glancing blows cut her skin, but weren't doing much else. Okay. She fell over, and then I subdued her. And she tripped. Okay. How did you tie her at that point? Like, I know you used the rope, but what, were you, what did you tie her up, up like? Just told her to put her, I pulled her hands behind her back and just you know, tied her wrists together. Okay. And then, then what happened after that? Then I took her upstairs. Did she go upstairs under her own power, or did you carry her? No, she passed out to, um, on the stairs. Why do you think she passed out? I expect uh, from the hits to her head. So you carried up to where? To her bedroom, put her on the bed. Okay. And then what happened? Uh. Just to be specific, what, what sex acts took place? Just vaginal. Your penis and her vagina? Yeah. Any condom use? No. Did you ejaculate? No. Did you ejaculate at any point with her? No. Okay. Um, but just before I forget, you I think I asked you I don't mean to bounce around on here, Russ, but with Jessica, I asked you about ejaculation. You said you didn't at that point. When did you ejaculate with Jessica? Um, the second time or third time that I had her uh, for moral sex. And was that at her residence or yours? Hers. Okay. Any other times that you ejaculated with her? When you ejaculated with Jessica, did you use anything to clean up or? No. no. What happened to the ejaculate? She swallowed it. Okay. Um, so getting back to Marie Franz, it's just straight vaginal sex, no condom, no ejaculation. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, how long does that go for? Like how long were you engaged in that activity? Uh, a couple, well, hour and a half, two hours, I guess. Okay. And then what happens next? Well, as I described, I suffocated her using um, duct tape. Why did you decide to, to do that? Well, again, because of the pictures. As I described to you, it would have, uh, it was going to be a pretty straight line back to Tweed. Okay. But why, why, why did you decide to use that method versus something else. I had uh, thought about strangling her earlier. That's on the video. What is? Short, short-lived attempt because she struggled quite a bit. And then I 
decided that I needed to suffocate her. So there was a short-lived attempt at strangler. And what's on the video, the suffocation or the strangling? Well, just me putting my hand on her throat. And then her uh, responding. Yeah. No surprise, very aggressively. Okay. Any videos of the, uh, the suffocation part or pictures of that? Now, you, know, you mentioned that you brought the rope with you. Where did the duct tape come from? I brought it. Okay. And what did you do with it afterwards? I think it, uh, it, it stayed in tweed. What color of duct tape are we talking about? I know it comes in a variety of colors. But Gray. Gray. Um, so before... Uh, the suffocation, um, obviously, how, how long do you think you were with her from the point, well, how long do you think you were in that house from the point you went in that window to the point you left? Probably um, four hours. Okay. So, correct me if I'm wrong, did you say you were got there at 11? Or around 11? I think that's right. So you left around three in the morning. Well, I was in the basement for quite a while before she came down. I, she wasn't going to bed, so I was probably in the basement for thirty, forty minutes. Okay. So by the time she saw me, it was probably closer to midnight. All right. Um, but I didn't have a watch on, so I'm not sure. Any gloves? I don't think so. Did you wear gloves with Jessica? Uh, only to get in the house. It's a very cold night. And what about the two women in uh, in Tweed? No gloves. So while you're with Marie Franz, what kind of conversations are taking place? She, anything in it, she said to you stick out in your mind? No, no I take her mouth. There's no conversation. Okay. When did you take her mouth? As soon as I got her up to the bedroom. Okay. Why did you decide to do that? Because she was uh, you know, quite aggressive. In what way? I was confident she was, uh, would have screamed, given the chance. What way? But she did initially. Did she? Okay. In the basement. So in what way was she aggressive? Well, just in... When she discovered me, she was very vocal, screamed quite a bit, until I subdued her, so I expected she would scream again, give the chance. Okay. Do you remember how you left her residence? Back door. Patio door. Take anything with her that night? Some of her underwear. Anything else? No. All right. Um, did you do anything else to try and uh, cover your tracks with me, Franz? Well, I had turned off my BlackBerry before I left Trent. Other than that, no. Do you remember trying to destroy any kind of evidence there, or anything that you thought may have uh, produced evidence or anything? 
I took her sheets off the bed and ran them through the laundry. Like the laundry where? At In her house. Okay. Did you run them completely through? Did you wait for it to finish? Or? No, I just put them in and put a whole bunch of bleach in and let it go. Okay. So the night you went to her house and got there at 11, you came from where? Like you said, you left Trenton. You yeah. turned off your Blackberry. Did you, are you talking about the base, or are you talking about uh, where did you leave to go to her house? Well, no, I just turned off my Blackberry before I left the Trenton area. Um, I would have left from the base after work. All right. When did you turn your, when did you, uh, what time do you think you turned your Blackberry off? Well, it's only a half hour drive to Brighton, so. Probably in the nine nine thirty range. Okay. Do you remember what uh, what time you would have turned it back on? When I was back on the four hundred one heading to Ottawa the next morning. What time would that have been? So six plus or minus thirty minutes. Okay. So you leave her house three ish. No, uh, I think it was later than that. So the four hours obviously was. I think uh, I think I went in about 11, was in the basement for quite a while, probably left her house closer to 4, 4.30, somewhere there. Okay. And where do you go? Uh, I drove to Ottawa. Straight to Ottawa? Yeah. Did you go by your house in Tweed or anything, or did you just go straight? No. Remember what route you took? Uh, yeah, 401, but from her place, uh, I think I went straight north on uh, whatever the road is that goes straight through Brighton up to the 401, hit the 401 and headed east. Okay. And so you're going to, what's the meeting you're having that day in Ottawa? Remind me. It's a meeting on uh, the C-17 acquisition project. Okay, and who ran that meeting? The project manager, Miss uh, Sue Hale. Okay. Is that the only meeting around that time period you would have went to on that issue with Sue Hale? Hmm? There wasn't like a weekly meeting or anything like that? Okay. No, this is sort of a quarterly. All right. Um, so the night you went, the night this happened, um, where did you park uh, that night? As I said, across the gravel little roadway, probably it's probably the same road. Okay. Similar location to the first night? Yep. Okay. All right. Same same vehicle? Yeah, in truck. Okay. All right. Um, okay, let's talk about uh the, well, seeing as we're going backwards in time here, why don't we talk about the second incident in Tweed um, with uh, Lori Masakai when it's uh, a 76 Cozy Cove. How did you uh, decide on her? I knew she lived alone. How did you know that? She went three doors down and uh, didn't know her, but I knew she was pretty lone. She had a boyfriend and hadn't seemed to be, hadn't been around. You know, uh, looked in the window and she was alone. So she she had a boyfriend, but he wasn't it too wasn't frequent. Okay. Well, he wasn't. She told me that they were fighting, so that's why he hadn't been there. Okay. So, um, did you look in her house before the night that this 
this incident happened, or when did you yeah, do that? I had been in uh, within the week, probably a couple of nights earlier. What did you do that night? I um, I looked around to see if there are any permanent signs of her boyfriend. I guess took uh, one or two pieces of her underwear. That's all. Okay. So the night you go there. Um, when the incident happens, uh, do you remember what time that was? It was pretty late. Um, I probably got into the house around midnight. She was asleep on the couch. Well, I didn't know that, but I knew she was in there. And how'd you get in, sorry? A uh, window in the back of the house. There's a little sunroom. Was it just something you had to slide, or, or how did you I had get to that? I remove the screen and, uh, and slide it up. Okay. So I got into the house, and uh, she was asleep in front of the TV. Wearing anything on your face that night? Yep, same things. Okay. The headband and the uh, the cap. Okay. Um, what kind of clothes did you have on? Just dark sweatshirt or pants. All right. So she's asleep on the couch. You're in there, and then what happens? We have been through this, eh? I know. I struck her with the uh, flashlight, thinking it would knock her out. It didn't. We struggled. I subdued her. Took some pictures. Left. It's probably in the house about two and a half hours. That's a pretty short description for two and a half hours. Well, yeah, we talked. I, uh, I, um, I told her that there were other guys in the house robbing her. My job was just to control her. What did she say to that? She was scared. seriously hurt. Did she say that or did you just assume that? No, no, she said that. She was she was worried she was going to be killed. I said, I'm not going to kill him. What did you do with, uh, you said you took pictures of her. Um, clothed, unclothed? Uh, both. Clothed initially and then unclothed. Are you in any of those pictures? I don't think so. You just took them of her? What kind of camera are you using, by the way? But, uh, it's a digital uh, sign. You just have the one camera? Yeah. And the video camera. Oh, so they're two separate? Yeah. Some cameras take, take video, right? Um, and where is the camera and the, di and the video camera? In Tweed. Okay. Is it the only camera and video camera in that house? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so you take pictures of her, and how do you end up leaving? You, uh, no, I just told her to uh, I don't know, count or wait for uh, a number of minutes before uh, 
Of course, you call the police. Okay. And did you leave immediately, or did you stay there for a while, oh, no, see what she was going to do, or? I left. Okay. Um, and where do you go? Home. Straight home? Mm -hmm. okay. Did you Did you wait to see if the police showed up or anything, or? No. Well, I mean, it's, you know, so what did you do when you got home? A couple hundred feet. Uh, I went to sleep. Okay. And what did you do the next day? Went to work. Normal time. Okay. A couple hours later. All right. Um, do you remember how uh, her clothing was removed? Uh, well, because her hands were tied behind her back, I think I cut off her top and then pulled off her bottom. What did you use to cut her top? Um, I can't remember if it was a knife or like a folding exacto knife or Leatherman or one of the two. Are these items that are in your house in Tweet? Yep. Okay. Was there ever any other time you used a, a, a knife to cut off clothing or anything else? Do you remember? I cut off Jessica's uh, top with a knife. So her hands were tied behind her back. That's all. Okay. Where's that knife? Which knife did you use that That was a leather. That was a leather? Tweed. Is it the only Leatherman in, in Tweed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so on the 16th of September, uh, when you went in that night, was that the first time you've been in her house? And why her? Just because I'd seen her and she was cute. That's it. Okay. So there was no. Um, you didn't go into her house before that that night. No. All right. Um, so you go in, and how'd you get into her house? Side window. Was not locked. Cut the screen, slid the window, crawled in. Okay. And uh, what you're wearing? Same. Sweatshirt, dark pants. The same hat and. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and where do you find? Uh, in bed, asleep. Okay. And what do you do? Stood over her for a while, and I uh, hit her on the left side of her head just with my hand. Just woke her up. We struggled. You know, just lay on her. And uh, very much like I described a little bit ago, Took off her, pulled her top down, and took off her pants. Took some pictures, left. Do you remember her saying anything to you? Yes. What did she say to you? Well, all kinds of things. Um, you know, she had a a young baby just uh, next door, in the other room. Eight months or so. I was obviously concerned about the baby. Concerned for herself. I assured her I was not going to hurt her. Physically, you know. Um, any underwear taken from or Lori? Yep, both. And where would they be located? In Tweed. Okay. And why are they in Tweed as opposed to uh, 
um, Marie Franz and Jessica's underwear. Remember how much of their underwear you took? Um, not very much from Lori. Did they know that you took the, their underwear? I don't know. You didn't discuss it with them or anything? Um, so where in Tweed would their underwear be? What's a duffel bag look like? It's a green army duffel bag. Okay. Are they all in the same duffel bag? Is there anything else in that duffel bag? Just underwear. Okay. Um, when these when these uh, pictures uh, are looked at. Uh, you talked about being in Marie Franz's underwear on the first night you went in. Did you take photographs of that? Yep. What about anybody else's underwear? Yep. Photos. Of you in their underwear? Mm hmm And where were those photos taken? Uh, well, sometimes in... In, in Marie France's case, in her house. The others in my house. In Tweet? Mm -hmm. So is this a matter you would take the underwear, go back, and and then at some point put the underwear on and take pictures? What about Jessica's underwear? Uh, she's only her right now. So you don't have pictures of you and her? No. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Well, I guess uh, I just have a, a couple of questions for you. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be more questions, but I guess what's on my mind right now, uh, Russ, is um, what made you decide to, to tell me this tonight? Mostly uh, to make my wife's life easier. Okay. Is what you've told me tonight the truth? Yeah. Okay. How do you feel about what you've done? Like what? Uh, you this if um, if this didn't come to the point it's at right now if for whatever reason you didn't end up on our on our radar so to speak uh, do you think it would have happened again I was hoping not but I can't answer the question okay um, not too much here, Russ, just a, a few details that I wanted to cover off, and specifically dealing with Marie France. Um, in the basement of her house, 
uh, there's a hole in the uh, drywall. Do you recall how that happened? Whereabouts? Uh, I don't know specifically, but it's downstairs. I don't remember. Do you remember doing anything with her in the basement uh, where you may have used some clothing or something to uh, to secure her? Yeah, I tied her up against one of the uh, poles in the basement initially. I went outside and put the screen back on and secured the window. Okay. While well, she was tied to the pole? Yep. And what was your thinking behind doing that at that point? just to cover up how I'd come in. Okay. Um, now, by the time she's tied to that pole, is that in the very initial few minutes kind of thing of the confrontation, or? That was shortly after I'd subdued her and tied her up, yes. Okay. Does she have the duct tape on her mouth yet? I think probably. Okay. The pictures will show it. All right. Now, in the upstairs bathroom, by her bedroom, there's a, uh, looks like something's occurred in there. Do you remember that? Yep. What happened there? She had passed out on the bed, and I had gone to look out the front window, see if anybody was coming. And uh, she got up and closed the bedroom door and raced into the bathroom trying to uh, get somebody's attention but her mouth was taped and her hands were tied. Okay. What but did you do as a result of that? Well, I just got in and subdued her again and got, got her back into the bedroom. Okay. Didn't do anything, just regained control of her. Okay. If I remember correctly, there's a bit, there's a bit of blood in there. Do you know where that blood would have, how that, that would have occurred? All the blood was from the initial hits as I was trying to subdue her. Okay. Her skin breaking with the uh, blows to her head. Okay. Do you recall blood being in the bathroom? No, actually, I didn't have the light on there, but it didn't surprise me. Okay. Um, there's a pair of underwear and some socks on the floor of that bathroom that belonged to her. Do you, do you remember how they got there? I do you remember seeing see them? them what do you recall doing to her breasts? It's pretty clear that there was some something happened to her breasts. Do you remember what that might have been? Mm, no, I, I certainly touched her breasts. I didn't do anything to hurt them. I remember that. No. Okay. All right. Um, well, Russell. Now, when I suffocated her, she was on her 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 front, so may have been something there, but... What do you mean? Well, she was lying on the floor in the bedroom as I suffocated her and obviously struggled. may have been in there that something happened, but I didn't do anything specifically to her breasts. Okay. So, when you suffocate her, that's when you have the duct tape over her mouth and nose? Mm -hmm. And that's on the floor? Yeah. And um, then what happens after that? Well, she died and I and took the duct tape off her head and put her on the bed and covered her up with the duvet. Okay. And what was your thinking behind doing that? Nothing really. Okay. Um, as you might expect, her rest, uh, Certainly, uh, even now, one of the uh, Ottawa investigators mentioned to me that um, there's a number of incidents that uh, that have gone unsolved over the years. <coughs> can I, uh, I was going to get into that, can I go to the washroom quickly? Yeah, I can get somebody to take you to the washroom, okay. 